Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Ariel Rodriguez here with Waters Corporation. I will be your host during today's event. Here to walk us through how Radian ASAP brings ambient ionization to a wider audience is my friend and colleague, Ed Sprake. Ed has carefully curated the content he will share with us today, which includes data for applications, including polymer additive analysis, monitoring of degradants in lubricant oils, and the detection of adulteration in dried herb samples to highlight the diverse range of questions that ambient ionization can help us answer. Ed Sprake holds a master's in chemistry with a focus on analytical chemistry, which makes him an excellent resource in providing firsthand insight into how to overcome laboratory challenges and get the most from your analytical instrumentation. Ed joined Waters in 2001 as an LCMS application specialist performing demos for single quadruple and purification systems, as well as providing pre and post sales support to customers across industries. Today, in his role as a principal product manager, Ed oversees Waters quadruple based mass detection technologies, which include Radian ASAP, Acuity QDA, and SQD2. Prior to joining Waters, Ed worked as an analytical chemist at Zeneca Specialties and Avisha in the UK using a variety of analytical techniques including LC, GC, MS, and NMR. Ed, thank you so much for joining us today. It's wonderful to have you with us. Now, before handing over the presentation to Ed, I'll cover just a few housekeeping points. Today's webinar has been pre-recorded to deliver you the best possible quality and experience. The session will be archived and made available for on-demand replay at your convenience. At the end of the session, Ed will join us for a pre-recorded frequently asked questions and answers session. Lastly, I'd like to thank Waters Corporation for sponsoring today's webinar. Waters Corporation is the world's leading specialty measurement company. Waters has pioneered chromatography, mass spectrometry, and thermal analysis innovation serving the life, materials, and food sciences for more than 60 years. Waters employs more than 7,000 employees worldwide, operates directly in 35 countries with 15 manufacturing facilities. Waters is committed to your success and in enabling solutions that promote human health and well being. And now I'll head the presentation over to Ed Sprague. Ed, the floor is yours. Thanks very much for the introduction, Ariel. I'm going to spend a little time today talking about the new Radian ASAP instrument and our intention to make ambient ionisation a little more accessible. Ambient ionisation is an area with a great deal of interest as it promises a faster, more convenient way of sampling than techniques such as LCMS or GCMS. And a quick search pulls up quite a proliferation of ambient direct ionisation techniques. Now, this slide isn't an attempt to present a comprehensive view of all of the research in this area, so my apologies if I've missed one of your favourite techniques. This should, however, give you an idea of how rich and widespread research in this area is. Scientists are always looking to improve upon issues which other technologies such as spectroscopic techniques fail to address across many fields of interest, including food security, forensics, chemical manufacturing and pharmaceuticals. As such, these techniques are often bespoke, built by individual research teams around the world and tailored to fit their existing MS instrumentation. So many of these techniques have stayed tied to research based environments and haven't really emerged more into mainstream use. Saying that, there are several techniques which have seen commercialization by either MS instrument manufacturers or independent companies and are more widespread in use than, than the more experimental techniques listed. However, even these techniques can be limited in application and exposure due to being designed to fit with a wide range of existing products, which might provide barriers to adoption due to operational complexity and relatively high pricing of the base MS instrumentation. So one of the premises behind the development of our Radian ASAP instrument was to look at how we could reduce the barriers to adoption for such ambient ionization technologies and enable the more mainstream adoption of this type of technique. 
If we look at the benefits of ASAP as an ionisation technique, we find that it's a quick and versatile method which lends itself to rapid analysis with minimal requirements for sample preparation before analysis. The ionisation process is essentially analogous to APCI and it finds wide compatibility with different types of both sample and analyte. And as there's no chromatography involved, there's also a minimised need for the use and disposal of expensive solvents. However, it's not a perfect analysis technique. And if we take a closer look at some implementations of ASAP ionisation, we're often looking at a vertical or near vertical probe, which is loaded at the top of the instrument, which is fine as long as you can physically reach it on the bench. Cleaning the ASAP consumable is usually carried out by baking it at a high temperature using the software. But this often means that you can have a process where you have to manually alter gas flows and temperatures to optimize for consumable cleaning and then reset them to the optimum conditions for analysis afterwards. Now there are several different implementations of ASAP out there and most of them don't physically guide the consumable into the source. This can also mean that there's a danger in contaminating the source surfaces with sample and therefore introducing background for subsequent analyses. And as we're typically looking at an add-on peripheral to a mixed use technology, we often see workflows that require significant knowledge of that under underlying technology to get the best out of the system. And we may only see some of the desired functionality. For example, lack of flexibility with temperature ramping methods for ASAP. So after taking a look at other implementations and both the benefits and challenges which are inherent with ASAP ionization, we looked at how we could implement some changes to the design of the system hardware and software to improve the functionality. I guess the Radian name itself probably bears um, some explanation as well. It's based on a contraction of rapid direct analysis, which really sums up quite nicely what the instrument is designed to do. ASAP, otherwise known as Atmospheric Pressure Solids Analysis Probe, um, which is the technology with, that we use to generate ions and enable mass analysis, um, actually can also um, analyze liquid samples or solutions um, or slurries even, um, heterogeneous mixtures. So the system as a whole is based upon some proven and robust technologies. So ASAP ionization itself was developed by Chuck McEwen and his group um, in about 2005. And it's really enjoyed widespread use on multiple vendors and types of mass spec technology, um, including our own universal iron source. So for the Radian instrument, we've redesigned the ASAP source to incorporate a horizontal sample loader which not only makes it simpler to use, but it also fits better with typical sampling and analysis workflows. The mass analyzer um, is based upon the compact format single quadrupole technology, which we premiered in the Waters QDA in 2013. And that's been proven out in thousands of customer laboratories ever since. So what we've done is we've brought these two technologies together and we've modified the designs so that Radian ASAP can provide a standalone, compact, robust and easy to use instrument which enables rapid, low cost per sample analysis of solids, liquids and solutions. The design of the hardware is backed up by cutting edge informatics tools such as Live ID, which are designed to provide results quickly and easily with a minimum of training or mass spec knowledge required. The overall workflow for sampling and sample introduction on Radian ASAP is very simple and it can be broken down into four easy steps. So the first step is to clean the capillary to remove any background material which may have been picked up from the packaging. Um, or from how the capillary has been handled. To do this, you simply load the capillary into the system and use the dedicated bake out button in the software. This automatically heats the capillary to 600 degrees centigrade for one minute. 
increases the gas flow and raises the corona current as well to remove any contaminants which may give background ions in your analysis. The second step is to load your sample onto the now clean capillary. There are several ways to do this. If your sample is a liquid or it's in solution, you can either pipette a known amount onto the end of the last capillary with it still sat in the loader, or you can simply dip the end of the capillary into the sample, handling it using the capillary holder. If your samples are solid, you can either touch the capillary on the surface of the solid, being careful not to overload it, and, and typically if you can see solid sample on the capillary, it may well be too much. Or you can dissolve a small amount of the solid sample in a solvent and use one of the two methods for liquid samples. Once you have your sample on your capillary, you place the holder and capillary into the loader on the front of the instrument. Now this will automatically start the acquisition. The instrument will acquire a background spectrum for a short while and then a written instruction in the software and from the LEDs on the front of the instrument will inform you when to push the sample loader holding the capillary and sample forwards into the instrument. If you have a temperature ramp or step temperature profile set up, this will automatically start when you push the sample into the instrument. Step four is getting your results. So Live ID allows you to match your sample either against a library or a statistical model in real time, giving you library matches or sample classifications as you're running, dependent on your chosen workflow. You could also choose to use automatic processing of data via open links processing for a mass confirmation workflow or with iron links to generate automatic reports based on ratiometric analysis or for semi-quantitative methodologies using an internal standard. So that's the basic workflow of analysis using Radian ASAP. Now to go into a little more detail on how the ASAP ionization technique itself works. The source geometry for Radian ASAP should be very familiar to those with prior knowledge of mass spec techniques. So the sample is introduced into the source on a disposable glass capillary from the front of the instrument, um, which is due to the redesign of the source that we've talked about. There's a stream of heated nitrogen gas, which serves two purposes. Firstly, it provides a heat source to the glass capillary to volatilize the sample. And secondly, it creates a nitrogen plasma in the region around the corona discharge pin, which is the basis of one of the predominant mechanisms of ionization. The nitrogen plasma indirectly creates ions from the volatilized molecules, which are then guided into the instrument and sorted on the basis of differing mass to charge ratio before being detected and generating the mass spectrum. Once the mass spectrum is produced, you then have some choices on how you process and view your data, dependent on what you're looking for from your analysis. MassLinks is the standard data package which provides instrument control and basic data acquisition and has the standard tools available to develop your methods and view and analyze your data. This alone can be useful for applications such as reaction monitoring, where you may just be looking for a quick method to confirm the reaction progress. You can also use the included open links processing capabilities to automatically generate mass confirmation reports and view your data in a simple browser format. If you're interested in semi-quantitative analysis or ratiometric analysis, IronLinks is an excellent tool to process non-chromatographic data and present your results in an easy to use and informative format. This can be useful for applications such as chemical formulation monitoring, for example. And then we also have LiveID. And this is the software which enables real-time library matching and real-time chemometric workflows. Now, on the face of it, library matching and model building uh, workflows can seem to have very similar uses, but they do ask subtly different questions. So it's worth spending a couple of minutes, I think, explaining the differences. 
So if we're talking about the multivariate statistical modeling approach, um, we're really looking to answer the question, are these samples similar to my gold standard or are they different? Now, this is great for applications such as monitoring for food fraud, uh, looking at adulteration or authenticity studies. And to use this approach, what you need is to build um, a statistical model using known authentic samples so that LiveID can compare this against new samples and look for significant differences within those, within those samples. Now, library matching, on the other hand, asks whether any of the compounds that are in your library are contained in your unknown sample. It's a subtly different question, but that type of approach is useful for applications such as um, quickly triaging seized drugs, for example, for forensic analysis. And we do have a standard library of 50 of the most common drugs of abuse for Radian ASAP, which is freely available for download from our website. So if we look at some of the main improvements that we've made to Radian ASAP, we now have a redesigned sample introduction system to load the consumable into the source at bench height, which means it's accessible to everyone. We have a dedicated single button in software to bake out and clean new capillaries, flush the source volume with gas, and also keep the corona pin clean. We've got a mechanically guided sample entry into the source, which includes an automated sample door, which ensures that your sample never comes into direct contact with surfaces in the source which keeps background to a minimum and minimizes the need to clean. We also have an intuitive and, di and directed sample insertion, which guides you through the analysis process. And also the ability to define temperature ramps appropriate to the samples you're analyzing and the analysis that you need to perform. So next, I'm going to spend some time showing you a few examples of the different applications that which we've investigated with Radian ASAP. I'll start with a short video clip showing one of our application scientists performing a real-time library matching experiment with LiveID on a sample of seized drugs. So after cleaning the capillary, one method of sampling is to dip the glass capillary into a solution of the seized sample and swirl it around for a few seconds. We then place the glass capillary into the sample loader, which automatically triggers the instrument to start acquiring background data, and the method LED on the front of the instrument starts flashing. When it stops flashing, you push the sample into the instrument and start collecting data from your sample. LiveID then detects the peak automatically and matches the acquired data with the library to determine which of the compounds in the library are present in the sample. The software then displays a match factor out of a thousand and scores of 900 or above typically show a high confidence that the match compound is present. In this sample, we can see several compounds, including diamorphine, 6-MAM, paracetamol, and caffeine. This type of real-time library matching using Radian ASAP and LiveID can be used to streamline the workflow for rapid triage of seized materials. Using the default library containing 50 of the most common drugs of abuse, LiveID enables you to match your unknown sample against the components in the library. The analysis is run with a method which simultaneously acquires data at four different cone voltages. Spectra acquired at the lowest voltage typically show ions from the intact species of interest. Then, as the voltage is increased, higher levels of fragmentation become evident. This essentially creates four spectral fingerprints which are indicative of the species being analysed and provides greater specificity than a single mass spectrum. In this example, we see the mass spectra of MDMA, commonly known as ecstasy, 
acquired at four different cone voltage. The lowest cone voltage of 15 volts, we mainly see the molecular iron at 195 and one other fragment at 163. As we increase the cone voltage to 50, we see very little molecular iron at 194, and we see just the characteristic fragments of MDMA. Live ID then matches that data which is acquired from the Radian ASAP against the library in real time, looking for matches against the spectral fingerprint at each cone voltage. So as we mentioned, this creates a match score out of a thousand and scores close to a thousand indicate that a compound is likely to be present, whereas lower scores indicate that the compound of interest is unlikely to be present. So in the example on this slide, uh, a sample of C's drugs shows a strong match score of 991, which indicates a very high confidence in the presence of cocaine. This is displayed to the user seconds after the sample is inserted into the instrument. And this high speed of analysis allows for quick multiple acquisitions of the same sample to satisfy accreditation. And the live results can then be output to PDF for storage where required. One of the other areas we're looking at using Radian ASAP is food authenticity and adulteration using the multivariate statistical modelling workflow available within Live ID. In this example in particular, we're looking at the adulteration of dried oregano with other contaminants such as olive leaves. In this case, to promote like for like analyses, a simple solvent extraction was carried out using methanol and the resultant extract was dipped with the capillary to load the sample prior to analysis and real-time sample classification against a statistical model using Live ID. To generate the model, we ran two technical replicates of 35 authentic oregano samples and 18 authentic olive leaf samples in a randomised order over two days and generated a PCA LDA model using these data. This provided good separation between the two groups, which was based on three principal components, and that accounted for more than 96% of the variance in the data. The model was then tested with various adulterants to simulate anticipated fraud scenarios. So as 100% adulterant, as well as a selection of authentic oregano and olive leaf samples not used for model training. A random selection of seven authentic oregano and two olive leaf samples, which represents 20% of the model training sets, were tested on one of four different instruments by one of three different analysts using either the dipping or pipetting sample introduction technique. In all cases, the Live ID playback recognition returned the correct classification with a 100% confidence score. Representative samples of four different herb species not represented in the model, so we use majoram, thyme, cistus and mint, were also included in the validation study. When we ran those, the model returned an outlier classification, indicating that the chemical profile was not recognised as either matching the oregano or the single adulterant class olive leaf included in this model and within the defined outlier distance. As well as the real-time recognition of samples using Live ID, I also wanted to highlight some of the benefits of the types of temperature ramping you can employ with Radian ASAP. Now, the simplest of these is clearly an isothermal method, which could be optimised dependent on your analyte. But there are also options to perform temperature step methods and ballistic temperature gradients, both of which can be used for different types of sample. Now, stepwise temperature ramping can be used to help deconvolute complex sample types, such as oils or polymer formulations. And these typically tend to generate several peaks or steps in the thermal desorption profile. It's also a very useful method for method development and can help determine an optimal temperature for isothermal work. Now, step 
temperature methods will have slightly longer run times than the isothermal equivalents, um, just because you're doing those different temperature steps. The other alternative is a ballistic temperature ramp where the temperature is increased very rapidly from a low to a high setting. And this really helps to volatilize all of the components in the sample. Now it does create less separation across the thermal profile, but it does benefit from a faster acquisition time than the full step methodology. So on this slide, we're looking at a ballistic gradient data from car engine lubricant oil, which was diluted in toluene. Now the ballistic temperature method can be seen on the left. Um, and we start the temperature at 100 degrees C and end at 600 degrees C after about two minutes. And this results in two clear peaks from the sample in, a, in quite a short amount of time. In comparison, if we look at a step temperature method, in this case, what we have, as you can see in the, the table on the left, is a method which increases at 100 degrees C intervals over a minute each. And we can see that in this we generate far more separation from the sample, which is in this case a polymer sample, uh, PEG 600, blended with four additives um, and dissolved in 9 to 1 methanol toluene. Overlaid in orange is an illustration of the temperature profile that's generated across the run. And you can see that they're not perfect steps. Um, and actually the, the transition between the lower temperatures is typically a little bit quicker um, at the early steps than it is at the later steps. Um, so it's worth taking that into account when you're developing your method as well. So if we look at the spectra generated from each of the temperature regions in that thermal desorption profile, you can see how the profile of ions changes across the run. In general, what we see is the temperature increases across the run, the mass of the components which are volatilized and ionized also increases. Although this is really more dependent on boiling point um, than mass, so it doesn't always run in mass order. Pulling out a little more detail about the polymer additives within the sample, um, we have octobenzone and cyazorb, which are both um, UV absorbers, and we've got ergophos and its oxidized form, and ergonox, which are both antioxidants. And really, I wanted to draw your attention to ergophos and its oxidized form. It's an antioxidant which is often paired with other antioxidants such as Ergonox 1010 as it's oxidized far more rapidly and it acts as a sacrificial additive to prolong the use of the main antioxidant. So looking at data like this, um, especially with temperature ramping to kind of pull out some of that complexity, we can potentially look at degradation markers of samples for applications such as accelerated stability testing or degradation monitoring in these types of sample. There are also applications for this type of analysis within the pharmaceutical industry. Reaction monitoring is obviously a critical step in the synthesis of new drug candidates. And for reaction optimization, where multiple analytes can be required to assess the progress of a chemical reaction under a variety of different conditions, we can use that temperature ramp feature to optimize the analysis. So this feature really allows the user to run samples over an increasing temperature range, as we've already discussed, and assess which temperature conditions give optimal response for different components contained within the sample. And it does this within a few minutes. So once optimized, the resultant method is very quick and very easy to run, uh, enabling not only rapid decision making based on the progress of your reaction, but also applications such as quality testing raw material, and analyzing time or moisture sensitive components or, or analysis of purification fractions. 
So here's an example of the analysis of a mixture containing uh, the beta blocker medication atenolol and its reaction intermediate, which is 4-hydroxyphenylacetamide. Simple extraction of the spectra from the total ion chromatogram shows the status of the reaction with subsequent analyses demonstrating the reaction progress over time. And as that reaction progresses, you can see the atenolol increase and the 4-HPA decrease. So despite being a simple workflow, Radian ASAP gives information-rich nominal mass data for reaction progress, providing the chemist with relative intensities of products and reactants, as well as nominal mass data for any impurities or degradants produced. So hopefully today we've given you a little bit of insight into uh, how we looked at the development of Radian ASAP as a product and given you a little bit of a, an idea of some of the breadth of different applications that this type of technology can potentially be used for. And what we have in the Radian ASAP product today really is a standalone small footprint easy to use direct analysis system. Um, we've based the development of this on robust known technologies and put some work into redesign the um, hardware and software both to make things a little bit easier and provide some extra more useful functionality which is really dedicated to this technique. We've also looked at developing the Live ID product. Um, so we now have library matching which is brand new for this particular instrument um, but we also still have access to that multivariate statistical modeling workflow as well and both of those provide really excellent real-time results from data dependent on what you're asking the, the system to produce and we've also got alternative data processing options so there's just mass links if you just wanted to interrogate the um, the data on your own um, but we've also got automated options like open links processing um, to generate reports for mass confirmation workflows or iron links if you're looking at things like ratiometric analysis and semi-quantitative analysis But I guess one of the larger questions really is, is still with this type of um, with this type of instrumentation is is where do we go with this in the future? Um, what other applications may benefit from direct analysis? I think we've taken a great first step with with Radian ASAP as a technology in trying to make this more accessible. Um, but there are clearly more things we can do and a lot of that is going to depend on um, where people want to use this kit so do we want to take this outside of the laboratory um, um, for what purposes um, do we need to automate this um, so that there's less manual intervention are there different or more appropriate ionization techniques or technologies that we can use to give better results in different circumstances? And are there specialist workflows where we can start to incorporate uh, mass spec technologies or other analytical technologies into those workflows to give you better results and, and more accessible results? Now, we can start to answer some of these questions, certainly, but I think these answers really have to come from our users. And one of the things that we'd certainly like to do is get your feedback um, and get your thoughts on the uses and the futures of this technology. Um, and that really is what's going to drive us forward and um, keep us producing instrumentation that is, um, is useful to um, all these different industries. So hopefully that's given you a little bit of food for thought and um, 
I'll wrap this up here. So thank you very much indeed for listening. Ed, thank you so much for carving out some time for us today. Really, really enjoyed the presentation, as I'm sure our audience has as well. So we do have a few questions um, for addressing with you today. Some of these questions um, are common in terms of frequently asked questions, so we could certainly use your expertise um, around um, Radian ASAP and really what have you experienced in the lab with these. So I'll ask you the first question, Ed. Um, some of our customers uh, and users have heard that ASAP is good for nonpolar samples. What type of samples can you analyze with Radian ASAP? Um, well, lots and lots of different types of samples. Um, I mean, we've got a colleague here in Wilmslow who's run everything from PAHs to crude oil fractions on ASAP ionization. Um, so you really can go quite non-polar. Um, it's also very good for, for polars as well. Um, I mean, as always, your ionization will vary depending on the structure of the molecule, um, but ASAP can certainly ionize nonpolar compounds for sure. No, it's fantastic. It seems like it's uh, very broad in its use and that's always good. Um, the second question for us really in terms of, of confirming identity of new drugs of abuse really, is that something that you'd say uh, the Radian ASAP um, is, is suitable for? Well, if you're looking at actually identifying new drugs, new unknowns, um, no. Radian ASAP is a nominal mass instrument. Um, so to do true structural elucidation, you really need to follow the traditional high resolution structural, eluc structural elucidation workflows. Um, once you're confident with the identification of the compound, though, um, you can add new compounds to the library, the Live ID library for Radian, and you can use the Radian ASAP to detect that in samples for sure. Excellent. Thanks for that. Now, during your presentation, you talked a bit about Live ID. Um, the question here really is, how do you train for Live ID? And the audience is wondering is, do they need to buy an HRMS and Progenesis, or will this be part of the Radian package? Yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's a very good question, actually, because one of the things that we've been looking at with the um, model building and the multivariate statistical stuff um, is to try and make sure that the models that you can build with Radian are valid and are useful. Um, so we've actually done quite a lot of preliminary work um, with HRMS um, and Progenesis. Um, based on the work that we've had done by um, colleagues here in Wilmslow, uh, but also collaborators in industry and academia, um, we've generated some really good quality models directly from Radian ASAP data, um, and they compare very favorably with a load of the preliminary work that we've done on high res instruments. Um, so all of this suggests that Radian is a good tool for model building, and it's a valid and useful approach using this instrument. Fantastic. We have a few questions that have come in uh, really around the instrumentation configuration, I suppose, and really how things work. And uh, this specific question is around the capillary and, and what it, it is in contact with once in the system. And, and can this area be purged? Yep, no, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Um, I mean, obviously, with ASAP and any kind of direct ionization technique, one of the concerns is going to be um, potential carryover and cleaning of the source. Um, the glass uh, sorry, the glass capillary doesn't really come into contact with anything that's in the source itself. Um, it, the only real contact that it has is with the capillary holder, and that stays on the outside of the source. Um, and because it's physically guided into the source by the sample loader, this really does greatly minimize the chance of source contamination from, from direct contact with sample. Um, in, in terms of can, can this area be purged, well, we've, we've talked a little bit about it, um, the automated bake-out functionality in the presentation, and it's really this function that's used um, to clean the glass capillary consumable 
and at the same time it raises the source temperature to the maximum of 600 degrees C and increases the nitrogen flow. Um, so it kind of purges that source volume, but what it also does is increase the corona current um, and what that can do is that can help to clean off and protect the integrity of the corona pin and just helps to keep everything clean really. That's, that's great news. That's great news. Similarly, I think it's a good segue, very related, right? And it sounds to me from the nature of this question that our audience actually took a peek at some of the videos that we have available because really the question is very precise. In the video, um, there seems to be a suggestion that the sample will sit outside the source, which you touched upon just briefly, for some time before the acquisition is made. So what about the analysis of volatiles? Yeah, no, that's that's a very good question. Um, the the methodology that we've shown um, in the, the little video clip that was in the presentation and also shown in some of the other videos that we've got up on the website um, really does show one way that you can use the instrumentation. Um, and that's really using that kind of guided workflow and um, giving you some guidance on how to actually kind of go through that task. Um, if you do have vol volatiles to analyse, then clearly you're not going to leave them or you're not going to want to leave them sitting outside the source for any length of time. And we have analysed samples such as whiskey um, or samples, for example, that are dissolved in toluene or other very, very volatile solvents, where what you can do is you can start the acquisition. And then while the instrument is actually collecting some background spectra, you can then go and sample and immediately push your sample into the instrument um, as you've got the sample there. So there's no real delay there. Um, so it's perfectly possible to do volatiles. Um, and we actually have um, a couple of um, tech notes and app notes which um, show things like um, whiskey analysis that um, pick up on those volatile components. Yeah, that's fantastic. That does great. Um, you know, I have a few more questions here, but I'm going to be mindful of time, Ed. Um, so I'm going to maybe just limit it to the next two questions. This next question is really about um, the system's capabilities. And is it suitable? Would you say Radian is suitable to carry out quantitative analysis as well? Well, so this is always an interesting question with, with ambient ionization. Um, for, for true quantitative results, really you're going to get better results from separations best based techniques. Um, for example, LCMS or GCMS, um, or even just LC with um, UV detection, that kind of thing. But you can get some semi-quantitative results if you're looking at doing things like using that kind of ratiometric analysis approach using two known components in your analysis um, or if you're looking at a single point calibration with an internal standard for a limit test that kind of thing um, so you can do that and iron links really is a piece of software which can help you with that workflow and to to, to kind of use those types of um, schema now, obviously, if you're looking to do something which is at least semi-quantitative, um, you're probably going to want to control the amount of sample that you put on the capillary as well. So you can really help yourself by using the pipetting technique to pipette a known volume of sample, for example, a microliter or so, directly onto the glass capillary so that you've got a known amount of sample to analyse and that, that should help things as well. Thank you for that, Ed. And the last question I've reserved for myself. I think I want to close out with really just your take um, on what is special about Radian and who and why would they want to use Radian? So I think what's special about Radian? So I think really it's the first instrument that certainly we have um, designed and put out there that is a single use instrument or a single technique instrument, I guess, um, and really has the integral parts of that system. So both the hardware and the software 
designed for that single point of use. Um, so what we've tried to do is really kind of streamline the instrumentation, streamline the software to make uh, people's lives easier when, when they're analysing with this type of technique. It is a very quick type of analysis to do. Um, and with tools such as Live ID, you've got real time data capabilities there um, to look at either library matching or um, to look at matching against a multivariate statistical model. Um, which gives you really a lot of options to do things like um, authenticity testing or looking at um, QC of incoming raw materials, that kind of thing, um, in a slightly different way than before, equally as quick as some other techniques, but giving you a lot more information and a lot more confidence in your results. So, yeah, I think while we've called out a few different uses that we believe that this could be really, really useful for. I'm absolutely 100% certain that we've not called out everything that this technology may be useful for, which is kind of why we finished as we did um, in the presentation, saying that really this type of technology is going to be guided by advice from industry and what people actually want to do with this type of analysis. And this is a really great step um towards taking that next step into um into the future i guess ed this is fantastic i, I want to thank you once again for your time uh for all the information you've shared with us today and audience very very thankful for joining us today we certainly hope you have found this presentation useful um, and by all means we welcome you to visit us at www.waters.com for more information on radian asap and additional products that are available to help you streamline your laboratory, gain faster results, and really work your best while in the lab. Thank you very much for joining us today. Stay well.